What is going on guys? This is Richie here back again from the Red Planet Films bringing you yet another movie review. I know it's been quite a while, but today I'll be bringing you a spoiler-free review for IT, the 2017 remake. I will be doing a spoiler-filled review. Once that goes up, I will leave the link in the description box down below just in case you guys want my further thoughts and analysis on some of the uh, spoilerish stuff from this movie. So this is going to be primarily spoiler-free, so... You know, again, if you're going to look for that review, it'll be uploaded within like the next day or two. So make sure to stay tuned for that. But anywho, so regarding it, the original that came out back in 1990, the uh, miniseries, um, I've never read the Stephen King no novel. I'm uh, not much for reading, but, um, you know, it, it was definitely one of those books that are very praised, despite one particular scene in the book where there's like a massive child orgy, but... I guess nobody pays attention to that. Anyways, so the 1990 miniseries, Tim Curry, everybody, you know, talks about his legendary performances, Pennywise. And that, for me, is the only standout in that movie. Tim Curry does do an amazing job as Pennywise. You know, he's funny, he's weird, he's creepy and all that good stuff. But considering the fact I never saw the movie as a kid, I saw the movie maybe about like five, six years ago. So I was like, what? 19, 20 years old, and I didn't like it. I couldn't get into it. I thought it was terrible. Uh, both the kid and adult aspect of it, it was way too long because, you know, it was condensed as one whole movie. So it was like, what, four or five hours long? I don't know. It was like two Lord of the Rings movies. So, you know, trying, trying to put all that aside, and, you know, the, the it, it doesn't hold up at all. There are a lot of bizarre things that they took from the novel that they put in the movie that just doesn't work for a movie. You know, Pennywise turns into like this giant creature thing. And if you haven't seen the original miniseries, I guess this counts as spoilers. But oh well, it's been out for 27 years, so you probably should have seen it. But anyways, I digress. So, you know, looking back on that movie or miniseries, whatever you want to dub it, it it's not very good. I didn't enjoy it at all. I'm like... This is it, you know, no pun intended. But, you know, my only takeaway was Tim Curry was dope. He was he was he was a great, you know, casting choice as Pennywise. Maybe go back about like a year, year and a half ago when they were announcing that they were going to do an it, an it remake. Eat. Ugh. When they were announcing that they were going to do an it remake. Of course, I was immediately turned off by the fact of it, because, you know, let's face it, Hollywood has pretty much run out of originality. They tend to remake everything under the sun, and it's just it's very annoying, you know what I mean? So with a lot of remakes, especially horror films or, or movies that are, are pop culture phenomenons and all that, when they get the remake treatment, it, it sparks a lot of outrage and it sparks a lot of concern because you're like, great, now it's going to completely just take a fat steaming dookie on the original source, and, you know, it's going to leave like a bad taste in it, the, the mouth of its, you know, the legacy, so to speak. So, you know, there was a whole bunch of casting rumors and everything like that, and then Bill Skarsgård got, you know, cast. And I was like, okay, you know what, he's a, he's a good actor, you know? Kind of falls in that whole realm, that's, that genre or whatever, so, you know, it might work. And, you know, the set photos came out, and I'm like, this looks dope. I feel like I was one of the only ones that liked Pennywise's look. If they would have gone the route of the original, I don't think it would have worked. I felt like this sort of take on it was a lot better. Having it set in the 80s as opposed to the 50s definitely works as well. The original, however, you know, it took place back in the 50s. And then, you know, their adult chapter was in the 80s. I have something in my eye. Uh-oh, it's it. Anywho, so I really enjoyed that whole take on it and everything like that. And I see a lot of people comparing it to Stranger Things and, and Stand By Me and all that stuff. And I can see the comparisons or like Goonies and everything, Nightmare on Elm Street. Because, you know, it does take place in the 80s. So... A lot of 80s references were thrown in there that I weren't expecting, and I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was hilarious. That was my phone going off. Shut up, phone. And I don't know. It just worked. The humor worked as well. I really liked the dynamic between all the characters. This was a character-developed film. The movie is 2 hours and 15 minutes, and it works. It works at its distant length because it starts you out with this character, that character, back, their backstory, their messed-up backstory, what each child fears in their life what his child goes through in their life. And some of it is more messed up than the other, but they all share this common bond that they're pretty much quote-unquote losers. 
And not only do they have to deal with this clown that only surfaces what he wants to, but they also have to deal with their childhood bullies and everything like that. There's a, a, a group of bullies led by a, a, a mullet man. And, my God, I, I hated those bullies so much. I hated them. I hated them so much. They're, they're those punchable bullies, and you just want to punch them in the face. But all these kids, you know, they do their part here. They were fantastic. The standouts, of course, were the, the, the actor who plays Bill, the actor who plays Beverly, and then the actor that plays the little fat kid. I forget his name. But then, you know, the other kids like Ed... And Richie, you know, they all did their part as well. Um, kind of wish for certain characters we got a little bit more of. But, I mean, it's seven kids that they have to focus on. So it is a little bit tough. And then I think by the trailers, too, is just a little bit mis misleading in the sense that I feel like people were expecting Pennywise a little bit more. Going back to Bill Skarsgård, he does a fantastic job. Fan-freaking-tastic. I, I was worried about what he was going to bring to the table as far as, like, the voice and everything like that or, or the mannerisms, and the voice was very well done. Very well done. If you watch any interviews with Bill Skarsgård and then you see his performance as Pennywise, it's like a completely different man is taking over. So I really enjoy when actors kind of morph themselves into the role, immerse themselves, rather, and it's really enjoyable when you know that they're kind of giving it their all and... I felt like he was, and I really enjoyed that. I can kind of tell by his performance as Pennywise. So he really gets the job done, I feel, especially like, you know, with Tim Curry looming in the shadows, you know, with that performance and everything like that. I believe that these are two different performances. Not to mention the fact that this movie comes out 27 years after the original. Pennywise likes to sleep for 27 years and then resurface once more so i thought this was pretty clever and you can always look at it in the fact that tim curry's portrayal was you know that version of pennywise and then he slept and then we get this version of pennywise you know what i mean so I, if you look at it in that kind of aspect i think it's really cool too the directing is phenomenal the the editing is phenomenal the cinematography looks great the movie looks beautiful the score is cool it really sort of feels, in a way, like a coming-of-age story, even though, you know, we're only with these kids for, like, the whole summer. Uh, I feel like whatever sort of teens or kids that do see this movie in this generation, you know, when they're looking back on it, like, 10, 15, 20 years from now, you know, they'll be like, oh, man, I remember the 2017 version of It or whatever, blah, 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 or as opposed to you know, kids who are now, like, in their 30s or whatever look back on, you know, the 1990 version of it. And they're like, man, you know, that was my sort of thing. Or, like, kids who look back on movies like Weird Science or The Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, all that stuff. Those are movies that I kind of grew up on, too, and I look back on those. Or, or people who look at Stand By Me or The Goonies or all that stuff, you know, all those sort of coming-of-age sort of 80s flicks or whatever. You know, it, it helps influence them or, you know, they, they feel some sort of nostalgia for that, those films and everything like that. And I feel like this is going to be one of those as well. You know, this movie not only sort of pays respect to the original source material and everything like that, but it also branches off and becomes its own thing. And I really do appreciate that, you know. It, it, it feels fresh, even though it is something that's already been done before. But... It, I don't know. It just hits all the right notes in a good way. My only, I guess, complaints would be that this movie wasn't scary. I haven't gotten scared in a film in years. Years. If you've been a frequent viewer or subscriber of this channel, the last movie that really just, like, it, it tingles my spine till this day and, like, had an effect on me as a kid was the Blair Witch Project, because I thought it was real. It was back in the age when, like, the internet wasn't, like, a whole big thing like it is now, so social media wasn't... You couldn't just hop on Google and be like, are these people real? Are they dead? You know, it was, like... It was almost like a snuff film, so to speak. I just kicked my table there. Sorry for the little earthquake there. But, again, like, this movie wasn't scary. It was more suspenseful. If I, if I had to kind of make a comparison... comparison I would have to look at it like in the sense of Don't Breathe that came out last August where, you know, the movie's not scary but it's super suspenseful, like it keeps you on your feet. And there are a lot of tense scenes in this movie, you know, that, that, that have to do with the, the editing, the music, the performances, all just blended and meshed in together as one helps create for this sort of tense atmosphere that a lot of horror movies today are missing. 
I feel like the one person who's in the game right now that really understands that is James Wan. His horror films are very well done. You know, they have that whole tense atmosphere. When you blend in all those elements together into one, they all intertwine perfectly, and then it just creates art, you know? And I feel like I, I just wish a lot more studios and everything like that would kind of just pay attention to that route. You know, get your good characters, establish them. Don't just throw together a whole band of random people and be like, hey, we expect you to like them. Some of them are going to die. We want you to care for them. And it's like, that's not the same thing. I need to get to know these characters more. I need a good story. I need a good backstory, etc., etc. And this movie, again, hits all the right notes. And I feel like this is going to be a blueprint, hopefully, that other fu future remakes and everything like that should follow, you know? But again... Just a little bit nitpicky here. I wish the movie was a little bit more scary. Like, I hate clowns, but I was entertained by this movie. Yes, Bill Skarsgård is a very creepy Pennywise, but the jump scares and everything like that, I mean, most of them are in, like, the first one or two trailers. You can kind of see them coming. And, I don't know, again, like, it just doesn't, it didn't, it, it takes a lot for me to get scared, and I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm just desensitized to, the, to a lot of things. That's the correct terminology for it if I, you know, had to kind of throw that out there. And, I mean, I understand what they were trying to do, too, you know, by letting you care for this character and everything like that and getting to know the story. But I wanted more Pennywise because he was just so good. Every time he was on screen, like, I, I had a stupid grin on my face. I'm like, he's so brilliant. He's really good. But, you know, I just wanted a little bit more. Just a little bit more. But, you know, maybe we'll get to that. But I'll touch a little bit more upon that in my spoiler-filled review. So, those are pretty much all my thoughts about It, the 2017 remake or reboot or whatever you want to call it. I really enjoyed it. Had a fun time with it. Highly recommend you guys see this movie in theaters if you're, you know, kind of a little skeptical on it. This movie's already breaking box office records, which is a very good sign. Uh, I feel like since Deadpool, really, and the success of that, a lot of R-rated movies are, are being more greenlit. I mean, we had Annabelle that was doing f pretty freaking good with reviews and everything like that, and that was a rated R movie, and it's a sequel, too. So, hopefully, you know, if they do decide to branch off and make a sequel, that it will be as good as this one. So, again, we'll just have to wait and see. But if I had to give this movie a letter grade... I think I will have to go ahead and give it a solid B+. So thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed my review, please make sure to drop a like. Favorite this video, share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, text it to them, whatever little social media platform you use. Any little bit of help, we will greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and join the Red Planet Army. Turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And check the description box down below. You'll find the link to our gaming channel, The Red Planet Gaming, where we are 650 subscribers strong. And we have a couple of uh, good horror games over on that channel for all you horror fanatics, such as Outlast, Outlast 2, a lot of Resident Evil games. The list goes on and on and on. And uh, current uh, playthroughs going on are Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, and a couple more games. So check that channel out. Link in the description box. As well as our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you want to follow us on social media and all that good stuff. But again... Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie. Let me know how you would compare it to the original. Let me know what you guys thought of the acting, the music, the cinematography, all that good stuff. Any and everything, feel free to sound off in the comment section down below. I want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on this movie. I enjoyed it, so I would love to hear where you were coming from. And again, if you're going to leave a spoiler, kind of leave like a little like spoiler alert learning, just in case anybody's looming in the comment section. Or if you want, leave the spoiler comments for the spoiler review. Again, once that goes up, I will drop the link in the description box down below so you can check it out. But anyways, with all that being said, like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe, check the description box, turn on notifications, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.